Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video we'll talk about something that is very basic to everyone that is related to dentistry or anyone that is related to the field of medicine that is the anatomy of mandible. Now before you talk about anything about mandible whether pathology, function or whatever it is you have to know the basic and detailed anatomy of mandible before starting anything related to dentistry. So in this video we'll talk about in detail the basic and important anatomy of mandible. So let's get started. Now talking about mandible, mandible is that part of your face that holds your mandibular teeth. It also articulates with the base of your skull through temporomandibular joint which you can see in this picture is present over here. This is the base of your skull which is your clinoid fossa and this condylar process of your mandibles is articulating with the base of the skull which is known as the temporomandibular joint and it is a type of synovial joint. The mandible is also the largest and strongest bone of your face and its primary function is basically holding these mandibular teeth performing the basic function that is masticatory function and also other movements that it does. Now firstly starting off with the basic anatomy of mandible that is pretty much very important to know before you learn detailed anatomy of mandible. So let's start with the basic anatomy. In this diagram you can see this is your condylar process. It articulates with the base of the skull to form the temporomandibular joint. This is the notch present between the coronoid process and the condylar process. This triangle shaped process is known as coronoid process. We'll talk in detail about what structures are present over the coronoid process. Moving downwards, we have these teeth you can see are present starting with molars, premolars, canine and incisors. The in inside aspect of the mandible holds very important structures such as glands, nerves and arteries. We will talk about that in a short while. This is the submandibular fossa that holds the submandibular gland. Anterior to that we have sublingual fossa which holds the sublingual gland. This part of your mandible no, is known as alveolar process and this is known as alveolar process because this is the part of the mandible that holds the mandibular teeth. Same is also present in maxilla which is known as alveolar process that is that part of the maxilla which holds the maxillary teeth. Now here the most anterior part of your mandible is known as mental protuberance is the, that part of your chin which you can also feel. Superior to the mental protuberance is the symphysis menti which is the midline of your mandible where the two parts of your mandible when you are in embryo embryology phase the two mandible parts join together at the symphysis menti. Now adjacent to the mental protuberance we have mental tubercles present on both sides. Now between the two premolars the first premolar and the second premolar almost in between them downwards we have mental foramen and this mental foramen is important because mental nerve passes through this. This structure is the body of mandible. This vertical structure is the ramus of mandible and at the junction of body and ramus of mandible this part is known as angle of mandible. This is the very basic anatomy of mandible that is a must to know. Now moving on towards in detail anatomy of mandible this particular view which you can see is the anterior lateral superior view anteriorly, laterally and a bit superiorly. So all these features combined this is the anterolateral superior view of the mandible. Now talking in detail about the anatomy of mandible this is the condylar process which articulates with the base of the skull to form temporomandibular joint. You can see this bilaterally we have condyles and it articulates with the base of the skull forming temporomandibular joint. Next we have this coronoid process. And this coronoid process is a place where the masseter muscle which is one of the muscles of mastication are attached over here. At the neck of the uh, condylar process we have a structure which is known as it's a bit of a depression which is known as pterygoid fossa or pterygoid fovea and this is that place where the lateral pterygoid muscle is inserted which is one of the muscles of mastication. Now moving downwards we have a structure which is known as lingula. 
and lingula is a structure where sphenomandibular ligament is attached and just behind lingula is a you can see the circle like entry which is present over here this is the mandibular foramen and through this mandibular foramen inferior alveolar nerve passes through inside the mandible and the basic structure that we have discussed before this vertical is the ramus part we have the angle and the body of mandible this external ridge like structure is the external oblique ridge of the mandible now talking about more detail about ramus on the ramus we have two muscles of mastication that are attached over here first is the temporalis muscle and the se second is medial pterygoid muscle which is attached over the ramus of the mandible now this green highlighted structure you can see just behind the third molar is the retromolar fossa now moving on towards the inside structure of the mandible you can see over here this depression a groove like structure this is the mylohyoid groove and through this mylohyoid artery and mylohyoid nerve are passing through just anterior to that this structure ridge like structure is the mylohyoid line and on this mylohyoid line the mylohyoid muscle is present over here it is present here the mylohyoid muscle now moving on towards ahead we have the submandibular fossa which is present right over here and in the submandibular fossa holds the submandibular gland which is one of the major salivary glands that are present in your mouth more anterior to the submandibular fossa we have the sublingual fossa and sublingual fossa also holds one of the major salivary glands which is the sublingual gland is present over here and this as we have discussed before is the alveolar process which holds your mandibular teeth and between the alveolar teeth we have the interalveolar septa the mental foramen which is present roughly between the first and the second premolar just down between them is the mental foramen and in the mental foramen mental nerve is present because through this mandibular foramen the al inferior alveolar nerve passes passes and then it divides into incisive branch and the mental branch and the mental branch originates over here and it supplies the teeth over here the most anterior part of the mandible is mental protuberance present over here and superior to the mental protuberance we have the symphysis menti which is the midline where the two parts of the mandible join when you are a fetus or an embryological stage adjacent to the mental protuberance we have the mental tubercle and finally we have the base of the mandible now moving on towards a different view of the mandible that is left posterior view that is viewing from behind there are certain more structures that can be appreciated through this view firstly the uh, the structure which is present over here towards the base of the mandible is the digastric fossa you can see this structure the depression like structure is the digastric fossa because fossa means a depression so this digastric fossa holds the anterior belly of digastric the digastric muscle has two bellies anterior belly and posterior belly and at this digastric fossa anterior belly is present another structure which can be appreciated through the posterior view is the mental spines you can see these two elevated structures present over here these are mental spines and these mental spines are also known as genial tubercles mental spine and genial tubercles can be used simultaneously both mean the same there's just two different terms that are used to describe these two elevations now these mental spines are also divided into two parts we have the superior mental spine and the inferior mental spine and their significance lies in the muscles that are attached over here on the superior mental spine on the superior genial tubercles we have the genioglossus muscle that is attached over here which is one of the main muscles of tongue on the inferior mental spine or genial tubercle we have the geniohyoid muscle that is attached over here which is a part of suprahyoid muscles and like we've discussed before this lingula that is a bit elevation that is present over here the lingula is that part where sphenomandibular ligament is attached and these are some other structures that we have discussed before and through this posterior view we can appreciate more structure which we have discussed just now is the digastric fossa and the genial tubercles and sphenomandibular ligament that is present over here now lastly talking about an anatomical important aging process that is edentulous mandible and we'll discuss this edentulous mandible because there are certain age related changes that occur as a person ages and especially when the teeth are lost you can see in this diagram that the height of 
maxilla and mandible has reduced you can see how it is reduced and the maxilla has moved slightly inwards and the mandible has moved slightly outwards and this process is just due to the resorption that has occurred that is giving this look towards this uh, mandible so it slightly gives you a look that the mandible has been a slight prognathic and the maxilla is being retrognathic this is just due to resorption so when a person ages and especially when the teeth are lost in the maxilla and mandible the resorption occurs and their height decreases and secondly you can also appreciate that the mental foramen which should be here now it has moved superiorly towards the alveolar ridge and this is all because when the teeth are lost and as a person ages so in this video we talked about the basic anatomy of mandible starting off with some introductory points about mandible then moving towards the basic anatomy of mandible and then finally moving on towards the detailed anatomy and what different structures are present on each individual structure of the mandible and so lastly we talked about the edentulous mandible and its features so i hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like share subscribe and press the bell icon thank you for watching this video see you next time